If you've ever shot landscapes, you're probably familiar with a graduated density filter. We use them when we shoot. But if you don't have one when you are actually shooting, then Darktable has come to your aid with a graduated density module. And that's what we're going to look at in this episode. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 49 of Understanding Darktable. Somebody on the Dark Table unofficial group on Facebook requested this week that I do a video on the graduated density module. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do that because it's nice and easy and <laughs> I just feel like doing an easy one for once. So I've got some of my images from Sri Lanka. Uh, this is one image that I shot off the balcony of our villa. And it's not a bad shot as it stands. Uh, but let's suppose I wanted to darken the sky a little bit and maybe I also want to introduce a little bit of a colour shift in the sky to more mimic the cyan tones I'm seeing in the, the coral down here in the water. So we go to our graduated density module which we will find in the effects group and what we've got is half a dozen sliders We've got a density control, which allows us to determine how much exposure compensation we want the graduated density filter to bring to our image. We've then got a compression slider, a rotation, a hue or color picker bar, and then a saturation control. So if we just turn the module on in its default state, what we will get is a one exposure value darkening to one part of our image and it defaults to being the top half of the image because nine times out of ten when you use a graduated density filter it's because you want to darken a sky. It's not always the case but that is most of the time. Now this density slider you can think of it as exposure stops and if you want it to be more than one stop you can simply right click on there and go two for two stops or three for three stops whatever and you will notice that the sky is progressively getting darker with each increase in this value i will confess when i first played with this module it sort of threw me because i thought that the density would need to be a negative value in that I am wanting to reduce exposure. Don't think of it like that. Think of it as though you were going out to buy an actual graduated density filter. You would think of how many stops of density am I looking for in the filter that I'm going to buy. Am I buying a two-stop graduated density? Am I buying a six-stop graduated density? So this module works in much the same manner. So let's suppose we, we want to go two stops. Okay, that's pretty much it for the density, although there is some more we'll come back to later on. Next up, we've got the compression slider. Now, I've covered the compression slider as it appears in other modules in previous videos, and it's much the same here. A value of zero means that the graduation goes from the top of the image all the way to the bottom of the image. And it is a gradual fade all the way from the two extremes of the image. And I'm talking as though we are using the graduated density horizontally. Obviously, you can use it vertically and you can use it at angles. And we'll get, all, we'll get to that in a minute. So compression zero means that the graduation is spread across the entirety of the image. If we go all the way to 100%, our filter becomes very hard. And people who shoot landscapes would be familiar with the idea of a hard graduated density filter that are great for when you want to shoot right at the moment that the sun is crossing the horizon, whether that's first thing in the morning or last thing in the afternoon you quite often want that hard graduated density so you get the hardest part of the filter across the middle uh, and basically nothing on the bottom half and 
you know, graduated density on the top half of the filter. All comes down to what you're trying to shoot, obviously. I do find it a little bit extreme at 100%. I've generally found that somewhere around about 60 to 66% seems to give me a reasonably defined transition in the center of the filter, or I shouldn't say the center, but around where this control line appears. And we'll get to this control line in just a sec. So use the compression slider as you see fit. It's going to vary depending on the image that you're working with. Uh, next up, we've got the rotation. Now, obviously, uh, if you hover over it, you'll get a tooltip that says rotation of the filter from minus 180 to plus 180 degrees. Now, you can simply drag that with your mouse if that's what you want to do. I generally find that the most accurate use of it is to right click on the slider so that you can enter an exact value. So if you do want it to be perfectly horizontal, then you know, type in zero and you've got it perfectly horizontal. Now, whilst we're talking about the rotation, what I want you to notice is that on the ends of that line, there are two little triangular flags. And by default, they are pointed downwards. And basically the, the portion of the filter which is doing the darkening of your image is on the opposite side of the line from where those flags are pointed. So it's almost like those flags are pointed to the part of the image that won't be affected. Now, you can move this line simply by clicking on it and dragging it. So, you know, if there's a part of the image that needs the graduated density, but it's not right at the center line of the frame, you can simply drag this to wherever you need it. Now, another thing to know about how you can place this line is that you can right click and drag across your image. So if I start here and I right click and I start to drag, you will see that I am drawing and I can choose whatever angle I want and the flags are pointed downwards and I can release my mouse and my filter is created. But if I drag to the left from my point of origin, you will see that the flags are pointed upwards. Okay, so basically what happens is from wherever you start your click, right? Let's say we go right click in the middle of the frame. If I drag left, the flags are pointed upwards and you'll notice that, you know, if I go around that central point, the flags just basically follow me all the time. So just remember, if you want to affect the top half of the image, start on the left and drag to the right. If you want to affect the bottom half of the image, start on the right and drag to the left. If I go from center to the bottom of the frame, then the left half of the image will not be affected and the right half of the image will be affected. Like so. And if I start at the middle and drag up, the opposite will be the case. The density will be applied to the left half of the image and the right half of the image will be left unaffected. Like so. Okay, so let's suppose we want to do something like this because we want to affect the sky. We now have the option to introduce a color to this graduated density filter. It doesn't just have to be neutral. Now, as I said at the beginning, let's suppose I want to introduce some of those cyan colors that are appearing in the coral down there. The one thing that does strike me as odd with this module is that although it has a color picker bar, it does not have an eyedropper tool, which almost every other module in Darktable which allows you to tweak color has an eyedropper tool. This one does not. So we're just going to have to guess. I know it's this cyan that I'm sort of looking for, so I'm just going to click on this hue bar, roughly where the cyans are, and nothing happened. Why not? 
Well, that's because of the last slider here, the saturation. We've defined a color, but at the moment our saturation is set to zero. As we increase that saturation, we will introduce more of whatever color we have got selected on the hue slider above it. So we'll go with something around 20%. And there we go. That's probably a little bit too much for my liking. It looks a bit fake. Uh, but just to demonstrate, uh, if we wanted to go for some deeper blues, we could change the hue. And as you increase that saturation, things get really out of control very quickly. But hopefully you understand what we're doing here now. So... I will back that saturation off. I will shift that hue back to where I wanted it. And yeah, that's nice. So if I now turn the module off, that was where we started and switch it back on. And that's where we're at. Now you might say, well, it's darkened the left side of your sky, but it hasn't darkened the right side of the sky where the sky is a little more blown out. Well, actually it has. It has darkened all of it. It's just there is still an exposure difference between my sky on the right-hand side of the image and my sky on the left-hand side of the image. That's because it was almost dusk and I was shooting at right angles to the sunset. Can't help that. We could go in and muck around with parametric masks to try and limit the effect to areas of brighter luminosity. But to be honest, I don't think it would give particularly believable results that's just my guess i'll do it quickly just to just to show you that i don't think it's going to work so we'll go with luminosity basically we want uh, inputs that are currently bright so i will drag this up to here let's have a look see what kind of range we've got there Okay, we probably want to include a little bit more of the sky than that. So we'll bring that down. Oh, maybe there's more darker pixels there than I thought. Okay, there we go. Let's just uh, transition that off a little bit more. Let's take that up a bit. That's more like it. Okay, so let's jump out of that. See, to me, that's, that's just a mess. So, like I said, I'll leave it to you to play around. Hopefully now you at least understand what the graduated density filter does. I'm just going to turn that mask off and go right back to no blend at all. And, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. It's, a like I said, a fairly simple module, um, and it allows you to just, you know, create some graduated density where you need it. On an image and like I said you know the beautiful thing is that you can draw that line uh, on any angle so if you need it to be at a 45 degree angle you can do that now I did say that there was more to discuss regarding the density slider and that is that if we just draw this back across the center of our image again if you choose negative values what happens is that the graduated density works on the opposite side of that control line. And instead of darkening, it brightens. So if we were to go minus two, you'll see that what has happened is it has brightened up the bottom half of the image. And you're probably thinking, but it looks like it brightened up the sky as well. Well, if we turn the module off, we'll see that no, the sky that's exactly where the sky was to begin with. And so now this has created a brightening effect on the bottom half of my image. So the side of the control line that the flags are pointing to. I guess there could be times when you might want to do that. Like if you've got, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of an example. I guess, I guess the easy example would be daybreak or sunset where you might have really dark foreground because the sun is below the horizon so you've got bright sky but your foreground is not yet lit 
or if it's the tail end of the day, it is no longer lit. And you might want to increase the exposure on your foreground portion of your frame rather than applying a darkening to the sky portion of the composition. Like I said, it's going to vary depending on the image in question and what you're, what you're trying to achieve. Okay, I am going to leave it at that. This is a module that I use quite a lot, I will say that. I know there are some modules that I say, oh, I never go near this. Uh, that is not the case for the graduated density. I do tend to use it a lot, and I love it. One of the things that it does say in the online manual for this particular module is if you are shooting landscape stuff and you don't have a physical graduated density filter and you know that you probably will consider using the graduated density module in Darktable when you are post-processing your image, it's worth underexposing just a little bit. They suggest one-third to two-thirds of a stop. I would actually argue maybe go a whole stop under, uh, just to make sure that you've retained all of your highlight information and then you can use the graduated density to, you know, balance up your image as you see fit. All right, I will leave it at that and catch you in the next one.